All right, man, so look, I came across this crazy video from Jubilee. This is black people anonymously. I cannot say that word. Please do not get on me in the comment, okay? Do not get on me. But basically, black people is answering seven burning questions. So without further ado, man, hit the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications, follow your boy on IG. What is y'all doing, man? Follow your boy on IG. Also, big, 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 big news. I got a podcast channel. Everything I talk about on this channel, I'm going to talk about on my podcast channel. But the difference is I'm going to bring different people onto the podcast so that way they can give a point of view on the certain situations that's going on in the earth. Uh, on the in the earth i meant to say on the, in the world but y'all get what i'm trying to say go ahead everything links description box below without further ado let's get it let go <laughs> mask off mask off is a social experiment exploring authenticity uh, okay i cannot read today <sighs> In an age of call-outs, culture wars, and perfect facades, people can be afraid to express how they really feel. So we brought together seven strangers, protected their identities, and asked them all seven burning audience questions. What will be revealed when we take the mask off? If your answer is yes, you'll turn your light on the police. I know that there are quote unquote good cops, but if you are working in an entire force with individuals who are essentially mostly racist and where police come from, um, the history of it with being the sheriffs of slaves and tracking down slaves using dogs or whatever they're using, it's just wearing that badge. It's just you're never really here for us, and we never feel safe hold, for that reason. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So, off the rip. Hold on, bro. We only one minute into the video, and you already talking nonsense. You telling me you basing everything off just a force of people? You say I know there's good and I know there's good cops out there, and I know, I know. But I mean, when you're in a when you're in a force filled with nothing but majority racist people, like bro, that doesn't even make logic sense, bro. Just because I'm in the just because I'm in a community filled with majority of racist people doesn't make me racist. I bet. Okay, let me just say this: ten percent, maybe twenty percent of officers could be just racist. Okay, they they could be racist. I'm not doubting that there's not racist people out there, but what I'm saying is I don't like the fact that uh, black people feel like police only attack them when they don't. When when they don't, police just don't attack black people. They that's not their aim point. They they trying to protect and serve. I feel like if you're doing something illegal. You get put over for it. I mean, that's just the rules, okay? I'm just saying, that's just the rules. But my whole thing is, I would never say F the police. Why? Because it's, it's funny to me how uh, black people, they say F the police, but when somebody break into your house, when, when, when somebody steal your car, or when something happened in your life, the first thing you call on, 911. So is it really F the police? Or is it F certain police officers? Don't get me wrong, certain police officers are racist, but I'm not going to base it off the entire force. I'm not. I'm just not going to do that. Simple as that. So, f them. <laughs> the only reason why I can't fully say that, like he just said, there are some good out there, and personally having a cousin who is a police officer, but everything else behind that, and all of the other people who introduce, who bring the racist and pretty much f up mentality to it, yeah, no, it's f them for sure. We're going to have everyone join the conversation. I don't really feel anything towards this statement because I haven't had any encounters with police, like, ever. Why do you have to have a personal experience? Why can't you just look at the damage that has been done? It's like different because I, I feel I feel like... It, I it's, it's funny how he say that. How, why, why you had to have a personal experience, okay? Hey, now, let me give like a little example. I, and I hope this example makes sense, but if it's a white person and they got this other white person that says something bad about the whole entire black community, and this white person says, oh well i can't say that about black people because i never had a personal experience with black people but then this white this other white person say oh why well, you gotta have an experience just look at all the damage that they have done i feel like that was a terrible example i don't think that was a great example i'm trying to give a good example but i know what i'm trying to say but i don't think it came out right y'all know what i'm saying like i know what i'm trying to say okay i'm not dumb okay i know exactly what i'm trying to say basically what i'm trying to say is it's the same thing with black people i mean like literally look at all the damage that has been caused in a black community by black people Black, black, bad, black people, bad, black people. I can't talk. By black people, 
Look at all the damage. All the damage that's been caused by us. By our by the people that look just like me. All the damage that has been caused. But you don't see other people going around look, saying, oh, well, I mean, black people, this F the whole black race, F the whole black community. Like, it's not a lot of people that go around just saying that. You feel It's not a whole black, like, it's not. But, come on, let's just finish. I feel the weight of my ancestors in certain situations and oh, other areas Lord. of my life than I do with the police. Okay, this is not me taking away from the black community in general because police are always targeting us. But Cap. I find it interesting that Cap. only the black men had agreed with that. Um, yeah. I, I'm like on the fence with it because I know that there are black cops out there that are truly trying to protect and serve. And I really don't know what I would do if we completely destroyed the police system. I would be scared because it's like, okay, well, I don't believe that is the the solution. But yes, black men have that main encounter with the police. And sometimes it's annoying because it's like, okay, is this the only cause that y'all care about is police brutality? But um, yeah, I just, it's halfway with me. I think feelings do become more intense though once you have an experience. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. No, definitely. And so like, you know, seeing seeing situations where my dad got pulled over, got questioned, got harassed for no reason, then to experience my situation down in Texas. I, mean, I had bought guns for the first time, registered them, followed everything to the T, and then still get pressed up against the side of my car like I did something wrong when yeah. I did it the exact way that y'all said I had to do it. That experience right there, my, my dad's situation started it, and then my situation is what finalized it. Our Asian First off, it's a lot of things I have to say about that. Okay, it's a lot of things I have to say about that. Number one, I feel like nobody truly needs a personal experience. Okay, because me personally, I never had like a terror. I done came across police. I got pulled over twice since like I, I got pulled over twice. But I never came across like wrong officers. I felt like I got pulled over being black one time. Only because I wasn't speeding. I wasn't doing anything illegal. I believe that it was because the person that was in my passenger seat looked at the police like very like like we looked like we own something pretty much. So he pulled us over to see what we see what was to it. But at the end of the day, it was like it was no like because like, like, I corroborated. I corroborated with the police. I didn't do all that, man. Why he put me over? I didn't do all that. I didn't look. I didn't look guilty. A lot of you black men, y'all be trying to y'all look guilty. That's why things happen to us because we look guilty. When we get pulled over, just cooperate, put your hands on the steering wheel, do what you got to do, obey, comply, whatever. Do what you got to do. That's it. That's it. You'll get off the gym. 90% 90 of the time, you'll get out. 10% of the time, you may go to jail or you may be detained or they may check your car. But if you if you good, if you ain't riding around illegal, just follow the rules. That's simple. Just follow the rules. If you ain't riding around illegal and you're doing everything right, blase, blase, you're good. And then with him talking about, oh, well, I've been pressed up against my car for doing gun and this and that, this and that. It's like, I never truly, I guess because I never came across it, but I never truly believe that police officers can just press you up against your car if you didn't do anything wrong, point blank, period. Like, I'm talking about you done did everything. They say, get out the car, you step out of the car, put your hands, and they just, ugh, like, I, I just don't see that happening. But to each his own, I don't know his story. You know, I, I truly don't know. I wasn't there, but I'm just saying racist towards you I have a neighbor who is very um, privileged um, she's married to a white man she's Asian and I feel like that comes a lot nowadays in America I feel like Asian women are trying to be the white woman of America and they're not realizing that they're also in marginalized communities just as we are. Especially Asians that are born into American culture. Um, it seems like they're just pretty much white and they don't have any empathy for other minorities. I have had negative interactions with um, like Asian people or like other people because I'm black and because colorism is a thing. But I've also had like positive interactions so I feel like yeah, Asia, it's just a very generalized term. I know it happens, of course, but me personally, I have not experienced racism from the Asian community. I do totally agree with the idea of colorism because it does seem like the darker you are, the quote, uglier you are in any ethnicity, which does suck. 
Oh, I think the American gosh, influence. Bro, I'm just, I, like, low key, low key, I know I do a lot of videos on race, but I'm low key tired of just hearing about race. The reason I'm tired of hearing about race is because people put race on everything. Everything. Everything is considered racist. Everything is considered colorist. Everything is considered everything. Anything with the color of your skin. I'm just trying to figure out, bro. I thought we was in the year 2022. We talk about slavery so much, blah, 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 but color and all this, oh, your color is this, your color is that. It's like, it's always something with just the skin color of a person. Like I said, bro, the skin color that you are has some type of history behind it. It's not just black people. So I don't want, I'm tired of black people feeling like they need pity. I'm tired of black people feeling like they just, like they just on top of the world or something. Like they want to be on top of the world or something. Like we still getting treated bad. When don't get me wrong, I feel like every race gets treated bad. We are in America. A duh. I mean, we all getting treated bad to be honest. It's not just the black people. It's not just the black community. It's the white community. It's the Asian community. It's the Hispanic community. It's all type of communities that's getting treated bad by whatever. And then black people, they feel like, bro, we y'all realize that we be racist back towards the white people, towards Asians, towards Hispanic. Like we be racist too. Let's be real. It's big, and that's on anybody that comes, no matter where you come from, what background. When you get to America, you spend a couple years here, you start to see how things are done, whether they're right or wrong, you see how things are done, how black people are treated, how white people are treated. So a little bit after I left the military, I spent a couple years in Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, and South Korea. These places were places where I was accepted more so than back home. It was shocking to me to not be followed around in stores in South Korea. It was shocking to me to not be treated or even looked at uh, the same way I would be walking down the street in certain places here. I have dated outside my race. In my past dating history, I feel like, you know, I tasted the rainbow pretty much. Like, <laughs> I dated East Asian men, I've dated Hispanic men. It's, it's different, you know, like you're never going to find somebody outside of your race that's going to 100% understand you, understand your struggle, understand your family, why you do things the way that you do. When I'm dating them, I know it's gonna be different. And I feel that's kind of like why I'm entertaining the fact of even doing that. I don't think that I would necessarily date a white person. I just feel like there's a disconnect, but as long as like they're willing to like, you know, have those conversations with me and understand like my blackness, I wanna have those conversations with them and I don't, I don't mind what their race is. I think for me, it's just all about my comfort level with you and how much I can relate. And like he said, um, I think a white woman would be like at the bottom of the totem pole just because <laughs> we don't have that much to connect on. But bro, what, bro? That, that doesn't make logic sense, dude. Oh my, bro, this video is like, like really like, I'm, I'm like on the edge right now. This video is like really like, I'm getting ready to walk out my door. Y'all know I have a habit of walking outdoors. I'm, I'm on the edge of walking out my door right now. Cause this, it doesn't make sense. You telling me that you have to date a person that you truly connect with on what type of level are you talking about? Because I believe truly, if I connect with you spiritually, if I connect with you emotionally, physically, if I connect with you on no type of level, I feel like we were meant for each other. I feel like if I could connect with you, like based off just, it, it don't even matter about our history. Of course, we're going to have two different histories. You know what I'm saying? What 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 I've been going through and what you've been through. Simple as that. We're going to have our two different histories, but that shouldn't separate us. I feel like we connect on the way. If we connect on the level to where we can get closer, that's all that matters. Why we got to connect on the level like, oh, well, we don't have that much in common. Um, why? Because they're white. And, and you heard what white people did to to, to freaking uh, black people back back then. You heard what you heard how white people treated black people, so therefore y'all can connect on some type of level. Y'all think y'all could be talking about slavery all the goddamn time? You think you're gonna be talking about how how this and your ancestors did this and that? Did I, bro? Like I'm, I'm just confused. Y'all think y'all gonna be talking about all this? No, y'all not. Y'all not gonna sit here and talk about all this. Y'all gonna talk about life. Y'all gonna talk about building each other up, growing with each other. Me personally, I feel like if I could connect with you just because you can help me grow as a person, help me become a better man, help me become a better me, a better version of me, I feel like, okay, this is going to be the woman I date, whether you're white, Hispanic, Chinese, Puerto Rican, I don't care. If I connect with you on no type of levels, that's all that matters. I don't care about your history. I don't care about what your ancestors did to my ancestors. I don't care. We are in a whole new generation. That doesn't matter to me. Point blank, period. Doesn't matter to me, bro.
but I'm not opposed to it. I would just kind of rather work with something that I know there's a lot of compat compatibility there. I'm not opposed to dating outside my race, but in terms of marriage, I would love to marry a black man. Okay. Yeah. Think about our ancestors. Like, they're probably turning in our grave. They're, they're, they're grave. <laughs> like, they're like, what are you doing? Like, we've done so much, and you want to be with yeah. this white person or oh, this non-black person? I've never <laughs> dated outside of my race, but maybe I should because... watching right now what is this what am i literally watching what am i witnessing right now bro are you serious are you serious are you freaking serious you gotta be kidding me right now this is how we think this is the type of mindset that we have as black people this is what y'all think about. This is this is how y'all y'all don't want to date a white person because the the, the ancestor, the ancestor, the ancestor. Bro, I'm tired of hearing about ancestor this and ancestor that, bro. You don't even know your ancestor. You don't. No, no, I don't think none of us do. None of us do. I don't know who I don't know my ancestors. I don't know. But we are in a whole new generation where white people is not whipping us no more. White people is not in control no more. Guess what? If you didn't know, there was black slave owners too. It was black people selling their own black people. And so like, it was, bro, do your research, do your history behind it. It's all in, it's all there. Do your history behind it. That's like me. I guess I can't mess with black people either. I guess I can't mess with black people either. But we talking about ancestors, this and ancestors, that, bro. It's 2022. Whatever you was taught in school, leave it in school. Leave it in school. You can walk past a white person and guess what? They're not going to whip you. Congratulations. They're not going to whip you. I'm just I'm just confused on why do we still have this so this animosity towards white people? Why do we still have this animosity? Do y'all want to be separated again? What do y'all want to do? What do y'all truly want to do? Or do y'all want to be brought together? Do y'all want to be united into one? Or do y'all still want to be separated because of race? White people here, black people here, mixed people here. Asian here, like, come on, bro. I'm just trying to figure it out. I'm just trying to figure it out, man. This is, it, it's driving me nuts. It's driving me insane that my own community of people think like this. Y'all really think like this, bro. It don't matter what, what level y'all connect on. You feel me? Love is love. When you like a person, you like a person. It don't matter if you're white, black, or Spanish, Chinese. It doesn't matter. You could be white and we could connect on so many different things. Make, make can connect on the same history, but we could connect on so many different things, so many different levels. Because a lot of black men tend to go to non-black women. Because they can control them. <laughs> um, yes, they and because they're easier. And because they have European features, softer mm. hair. Exotic. They like the Kim Kardashian looking woman. Exotic. You know, you want the black woman aesthetic, but you need the European yeah. features. So maybe I should date outside of my race, but I personally, like you said, I want to build with a black man. I want to have black children. I, th that's what I want to do. But with this generation of black men, I don't know yeah. if it's possible. Me having sex with a white man, it's just, it's the master aspect. Mm -hmm. It's the buck breaking history. Huh? If you know. What did you just say? Huh? Did he mean? He must be. Okay. He must, he must go the opposite way. Uh, he must go the opposite way, okay? Because I think he just said him having with a black man. I think he go the opposite way. Okay. This generation of black men, I don't know yeah. if it's possible. Me having sex with a white man, it's just, it's the master aspect. Now, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Before, before he get into what he got to say, let me, let me get into what she just said. You talking about the generation of black men, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. I understand. I don't understand. But... My whole thing is, why do you think so many black men go to non-black women? It's not because they're easier to get. It's not because of that. It's simply because of how they treat us. You feel me? Not a lot of black women. And I'm not bashing every black woman. Because a lot of black women do do this. But not a lot, not a lot of black women treat black men like kings. Y'all y'all, y'all kick dirt on us. Y'all do this. Y'all want this out of us. Y'all want this amount of money. Y'all want us to have this type of job. Y'all want this. Y'all got all these expectations. All these expectations. But I, I go to a white woman. She don't got that many expectations for a black person. And I'm not saying she she got the type of expectations for a white man too. I'm just saying they don't have that many expectations for a black man. They don't. They don't. They don't need. 
this. Oh, you got to be in the NBA. Oh, you got to do this. Oh, you got to do that. Oh, you got to do this. They don't have all the time. And then they treat us like kings. Treat us like kings. A lot of generation of these, a lot of black women in this generation, y'all feel like it's cool to 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 want to be the mass to want to be the man in a relationship. It's not that oh oh I go to a, a white woman because I can control them. No, it's not about controlling. But I feel like if I'm the man that you're trying to be with, if I'm the man you're trying to marry, I deserve to be more masculine in the relationship. Not my woman trying to be masculine. No, be feminine. Do what you do, but not being all masculine, bro. No. And that's what a lot of women fail to realize. That's why a lot of black men, they definitely do go to white women. Yeah, they definitely do. And then it's a lot of it's a lot of black women in the generation that think it's okay to come outside any type of way that's so hood and ghetto and ratchet. Not say every black woman. No, I have a black woman myself. But do I have any preference? No, I do not. If I did a white woman, I did a white woman. If I did an Asian one, I did an Asian one. I don't care. If we connect, we connect. Simple as that. I don't look at race. Like, like, like Kevin Gates said, I look at real and I look at fake. I don't look at race. Race is not, race, I don't look at that. That, no, I don't, mm. It's the buck breaking history. If you know what buck breaking is, it's mm. all of that combined. And then the idea of most times, even in heterosexual relationships, it's usually a fetish, a fetish for the individual to be with you. It's either because you have a nice body or your skin is so dark and lovely or because you have, you know, that tool that they want, um, if you don't know what I'm talking about. So <laughs> yeah, in general, it's always something on your body that they want. And if it's genuinely true love, that can happen. But for the most part, I just think interracial dating is disgusting. I've felt oppressed by my own community. I actually sometimes feel very uncomfortable in spaces full of black people. If you're not desirable as a black woman, if you're not desirable to men, then you tend to get overlooked. I have to work my ass off for things that I want. Black men, cis hetero black men specifically, they oppress all of us. And it sucks because I want to be with a black man, but it's like, I have to try to appeal to my oppressor. Um, I'm gay and I'm also black. Um, so within the black community, I feel like, again, when we go to these protests, when we go out to these clubs or parties and I'm in heterosexual spaces, I feel like, oh, it's, yeah, he's black, but like he's gay. So we can't really mess with him. Like he can't really be in our space. And it's like, how is this your space that you claim over a sexuality and a sexual preference, essentially, rather than us being the same race? Yeah, of course, like you were saying, same thing with race. Same thing with race. I, I mean, it's the same thing. Saying like, if, if you're in the LGBTQ community, it's intersectionality. So, I, I people are more cool with me if they if I'm passing and they see me as like a cis black guy versus um, if if they know I'm trans. In terms of my what experience, what is happening right now, bro? The, the, what is happening? It, 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 I'm confused. I am literally confused. I swear I thought, so is he trans? I'm, I'm lost. I don't know. No I feel way. like maybe black people were gatekeeping opportunities or like trying to be super stingy or trying to be the token black person and not really, they kind of like bully other black people to make them be like, well, you don't deserve to be in my space. Like this is my zone. This is the area that I'm working in. And it's kind of like they're trying to keep other black people from being successful. Like I feel like I've seen that a lot. And I feel like that's happened to me before too. When I was living in Mississippi, I was around predominantly black people. I didn't feel any different. But now that I'm back here in California and I'm around, you know, other races, like, well, I can see why this could be considered colorist. Or I can see how in this situation, maybe I'm feeling, you know, like I'm not as worthy as these other people. But I just couldn't use the word oppressed really to describe how my experiences have went. Have you ever wished you weren't black? Like, I want to say record straight, I love myself now. Like, I love being a black woman. But like for so long, because of also family members feeding into the whole idea of like, oh, you know, you're so pretty uh, because you're lighter. For so long as a child, I associated being black as being something that was a bad thing because I saw how people that were darker than me were treated. And I was just like, oh, I, I don't wanna be this anymore. 
but I mean, with a lot of love and compassion and hardcore teaching, I was like, you know, being black is honestly the best thing ever. We lit. <laughs> I just feel like we're lit and I get where that comes from. That's a part of colorism. And that happens a lot in our community. And I just feel like if we all just accepted our blackness more, we would just be great. Like when I was younger, I moved to like a town that was like predominantly like white and Hispanic. I, I never felt like specifically like, oh, I wish I wasn't black, but I did like look at other people and say, I wish I had hair like them. I wish I looked more like them. Like yeah. I, I love being the race that I am, but having 4C hair and having darker knuckles, darker kneecaps, especially in elementary school and middle school, getting through that was really hard. Now at this age, I'm learning to accept all parts of me, but I still battle with it like every day. There were times where I maybe wish I, I will want to, I do want to say this. If anybody that feel like they don't want to be a certain race, whether you're white, whether you're Hispanic, Chinese, whatever, if you feel like you don't want to be a certain race, just know that it's a reason why you're what you are. Okay, it's purpose behind who you was created to be. You feel me? I was created to be black, I was created to be this and that for a reason. It's a reason behind everything. You know, God didn't just create you just to create you. He created you for a purpose, purpose in the plan. So don't never feel like, oh, I, I don't like being this color or, oh, I, I wish I was this color. Don't never feel like that, ever. That I wasn't black American, that maybe I wish I was an African woman or Brazilian because I feel like black Americans, like we kind of were disconnected from our African roots and our heritage. And that part kind of hurts because it's like we don't really have much to call our own besides like Ebonics or AAVE. But black American culture has ultimately set the tone for a lot of modern day pop culture too. So I'm proud of that part as well. I would raise my kids differently than my parents raised me. If you haven't had an experience with whether sexual abuse or some type of violence in your home, mm -hmm. you are lucky in the black community because it happens to so many of us. And I feel like with me experiencing that growing up, I would never beat my child. I don't want to have to feel like beating my child is a resource or a source of like them respecting me. Yes. I want them to know about mental health and take their mental health actual like serious because mm -hmm. we don't take it serious in the black community at all. No, I love that you mentioned that specifically about mental health because it's something you can't talk about in our mm -hmm. community sometimes. It's like, well, what's wrong with you? Like, are you crazy? I'm gonna, I'm gonna whoop your tail. Like, mm -hmm. you shouldn't be acting this way. I give you everything. You have no reason to be depressed. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna reciprocate that onto my children. And I don't want them to feel like if they're feeling depressed, if they're feeling overwhelmed, I don't want them to think they can't come to me and talk about it. My parents, they didn't have that opportunity to communicate with their yes. parents because yes. they were raised in a completely different yes. generation. Okay. Yeah. So now like I see my mom was, you know, raising me this way because that's what she's used to, but I'm gonna cut it off with my line. Our kids are probably going to be like, yeah, I ain't doing that when I have my kids like each generation gets wiser and they learn something else or have resources to something else. So I, I just want to always highlight the good things that my parents did. I've already me personally, I will definitely say I would never change the way that my mother raised me. All right. The way that my mother raised me, man, she was a single mother. She she did it all on her own, boy. My mama was OG, you feel me? My mama an OG. Hey, shout out to my mama, man. Shout out to Mama Duke, you feel me? She's the OG for real. Mama depend, you know what I'm saying? She the OG because, bro, I, no, she raised me herself. Like, she did this on her own, bro. No father, no nothing. She did this on her own, bro. Real talk. I appreciate mama, and I love the fact that she taught me about God. She taught me, well, she taught me, I, I knew about God, but then when my stepdad came in my life, that's when I truly knew about God. You see what I'm saying? But I appreciate my mom for, you know what I'm saying? I, I appreciate my mom, man. Acknowledge them and address the bad things with them, but now I can forgive and let it go and yeah. just highlight what they did do right and kind of mix that with my own. I can't be honest about who I am. Being black, like if I'm in a white space, I'm like constantly like, how am I coming off? 
Um, but a lot of times for me, it's like, you know, in terms of being trans also, like, how am I walking? How am I talking? How am I being received? Do these people, are they speaking at me or looking at me like they're comfortable with me? And it's just pretty tiring sometimes when I'm around other people and I'm constantly checking myself. Since we're in the age of like cancel culture, it's just really easy. I feel like if you, if even if you want to be honest, it's like sometimes you can because you have like a fear of getting canceled or a fear of people like lashing out on you and I feel Man, I don't care about what nobody think. And I feel like that should be anybody. I don't care about what nobody think. I come on this channel every single day, every single week. I give what I got to give at the end of the day. I don't need to pretend to be anything because I feel like, I feel like when you have, okay, me personally, I have the Holy Spirit in me. Okay, I'm a God-fearing man. I got the Holy Spirit in me. So when I'm around people, I don't have to fake and act a certain way that I'm not truly in. like I'm not because when you have the Holy Spirit in you, it's like it's this it's this way that I act that I don't. This is just the way I act. I'm very nice. I'm very kind. I'm always smiling. You know, even though I got tats and all this, but they they look over that because they just get that they get that vibe off me. That vibe, like even it was this one dude I was talking to, didn't know him from a can of paint, but he said before he even met me or before he even knew me and having a conversation with me, he said. I already knew you was like that. Cause I just got that vibe off. I got that vibe off you. Like I don't need to. I don't need to act a certain way. Like people just get the vibe off me. I can step into rooms and people feel that energy, that good vibes, because I got the Holy Spirit in me. The Holy Spirit is inside of me. So it's like you know, I could I could walk into rooms. I could do this. I could do that, and people would still be like, okay, I, like I, I, it's something about this man that I just don't know. And on top of that, my last name Golden too. So I mean, you know what I'm saying? That, that's just a that's just a, a name within itself, a unique name within itself. That have nothing to do with anything. But I'm just saying that's just a unique name within itself. So like in certain senses like that, I'm not I can't be completely honest in terms of like my views on certain things just because of like how people are going to react. It takes a lot for a person to be themselves and fully own their identity no matter who you are or what you are so living in that i've learned to own that and i just i'm always blunt i'm always me you see what you see is what you get if you got a problem you can leave so yeah it's exhausting to try to defend yourself all the time about who you are but at the end of the day i sleep better at night knowing that i'm just me Woo. i'm not gonna lie Number one, I just want to say shout out to Jubilee, bro. I appreciate y'all bringing these type of videos to us. Uh, number number two, I, I I just want to say I pray that these people truly, not I don't want to say seek help, but seek help, okay? Because to be honest, everything they were saying, it was some parts in there that I, okay I agree with, but then some parts in there just like I just don't like the fact that they bubble black in the in everything they said. They just bubble that 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 race. You know what I'm saying? It's not just that race that's going through the same stuff. It's not just that race. It's not that race that's just going through stuff. It's multiple races that's going through a lot of different things. But anyways, man, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Man, hit that like button, subscribe, and on post notifications. Like I said, link the description box below. It's the podcast. So go over there, hit the subscribe button, do what you got to do. Without further ado, man, it's me, your boy, the pen. I love each and every one of y'all. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace.